Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to attempt to go through a bit of a tutorial on how I set up my software-defined radios with these $10 USB dongles. Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Eric. Glad you could join me today. Today I'm going to attempt to go through uh, well, a bit of a tutorial of sorts on how I set up the software side of things for my uh, software-defined radios. For those of you not familiar, these are the $10 USB sticks that we uh, can now receive oh, tons of different radio signals on them, all different kinds of broadcasts, and either decode them, listen to them, uh, lots of different things we can do. Anyway, uh, this is my SDR kit. For those of you who didn't see the video, I'll post a link right up here of all the items in the kit. And today we'll move forward into uh, sort of an overview on, on how we can, how I set up my software. It's probably quite a bit different than most do it. As with most things I do, it tend to be a little different. Anyway, hopefully you get some tips from this and we'll move into the computer side of things. Well, let's take a look at how I set up my uh, SDR dongle programs. These are stored in my Dropbox folder, so uh, they're synchronized across all my PCs, and I'm always running the most current uh, configuration. If I change it on one computer, it'll be changed on the others. Just uh, be wary if you follow my style of setup. If you have multiple instances of SDR running on multiple computers, they'll conflict trying to update the, uh, the configuration files. So uh, what I usually do if I'm running, say, SDR Sharp on multiple PCs, you can just copy this folder over to your desktop and run it from there. Um, and that way you'd be running that standalone config for whatever reason. I seldom need to run multiple PCs. But anyway, these are the programs. We'll start with the SDR Sharp. Uh, pretty sure most people will be familiar with this, but this is the, the program I use to actually tune the software-defined radio on the dongle. Uh, start with the configuration. Uh, I have it set up for the EasyCap dongle and uh, offset tuning, and I set my frequency correction at 82. This is a bit better than my last videos. I found that uh, now that uh, the SDR is uh, seems to be broken in, uh, this has never wandered anymore due to temperature. It's always static at 82 and gives me a bang on. This FM frequency in the background is at 101.7. Uh, just compare it to the real world and adjust this uh, to suit. So, uh, pretty basic, all the controls. I think there's tons of tutorials out there. Uh, let's just turn it up. Mostly so cloudy with a low of minus 3. Tomorrow, partly to mostly cloudy. Got FM radio coming through. And we've got uh, 101.7, the one in the background. We've got the data coming through. Uh, filter audio, this is uh, interesting. If you're decoding digital formats, uncheck this. Otherwise, you can leave it checked for most uh, voice transmissions. Uh, this is where you'd modify the FFT display. You can tweak this. This one's the main setting that matters, depending on your uh, computer speed. I have to turn this down right now while I'm doing screen capture because it will bring the computer to its knees if I take it up uh, any higher. But when you're doing frequency analysis, seeing what you what digital mode you're receiving uh, on the waterfall, you probably want it quite a bit higher and uh, give you good resolution. But uh, yeah, that's about it. This DD, DDE tracking client, we'll come back to that. Uh, frequency manager, this is where I have some random frequencies that I either use or have found. So here's the A cars. Uh, here's a baby monitor that I found local to my location. Uh, let's see if we can hear what that's up to. We can minimize this. Not much going on. If you have a baby monitor, just be aware that it is broadcasting all the time to anyone with a radio. Knock the contrast back a little bit. So, uh, the CB band, there should probably be some activity on that right now. Let's see if we can grab a signal off of that. There's one right there. Maybe, maybe not. 
see you this morning. You know, like uh, going nose to tailgate to walk in any of the access drives, like the one on the van here. And there's like Pretty faint, that one. Uh, that's kind of a bad time of day for that. Uh, the guys will really be yakking here shortly. Um, some aircraft, uh, some police. And it looks like they're not talking right now. Oh, I forgot to mention one other setting up here. This uh, correct IQ. Uh, if you're using the 820T dongle like me, you can get rid of these uh, kind of spurious emissions. I'm not. I'm sure there's a term for that. Uh, but enabling that gets rid of the, the stuff generated internal in the dongle. Uh, some taxi, and I'm thinking this is going to be a NOAA weather radio. Yep. So that's the NOAA, NOAA weather radio close by to me. Uh, it's actually broadcast from my local town here. I was hoping there'd be one more thing we can catch while we're zoomed in on that. We should be able to see the AIS ship beacons. There's one right there, that little dot that popped up. If we pump the contrast a little bit, there's another one there. So these two are the uh, automatic location transmissions coming from ships on the on the Great Lake, not close, or uh, pretty close to me. Uh, International Space Station, some other good stuff. Anyway, those are all just frequencies that I use. Uh, this one's a handy one if you're listening to voice on, say, short wave. If you enable this, uh, let's see if we can crank that up and hear the difference. You can hear the difference in the background noise that it cuts off, and if you crank that up, it's going to basically turn it into a fishbowl. So that's basically SDR Sharp, a quick run through. Uh, again, this isn't a really extensive video on how to set that up, but uh, yeah, it gives you the basics. Let's have a, let's go back to the files and show you how I lay out my files. So as I mentioned, they're all in Dropbox, so they're synchronized. Uh, this is my ADSB scope that I use for plotting the uh, the aircraft location beacons. Uh, ADSB Sharp is the server, so you use that instead of SDR Sharp. Audacity is a freeware sound recording program. I don't have this open right now. Um, what you can do with that is record MP3 files to your PC, but it has a nifty little voice activated function. So if you set your SDR Sharp up on uh, your local scanner, your local police frequency, or whatever, you can use that to uh, only capture when they're transmitting and then you can listen to it after the fact and don't have to wait through all the pauses so if you wanted a summary of what happened over a few hours you could just play it back multi PSK this could be 10 episodes all in itself you can use it to decode just about anything Orbitron this is my satellite tracking program that I said we'd come back to so we'll take a quick look at Orbitron. Uh, we'll select the NOAA 15 satellite. Hopefully this doesn't bring my computer to its knees again. Uh, we have NOAA 15 selected here. We have SDR Sharp selected under the rotor radio. We just click connect. And with any luck, we switch back to SDR Sharp. Hit go. On the options, we pick Orbitron and we just hit connect and with any luck there we go uh, Orbitron is now in control of SDR Sharp and will tune us in and follow the Doppler of the satellite uh, not a big deal on the NOAA sats there's very little Doppler but uh, uh, pretty handy it's uh, definitely one of my favorite programs So next that takes us to the PDW 3.1. This is what I use for pager decoding and uh, ACARS. So this will do POXAG, FLEX, ERMES, and ACARS decoding. It's a little finicky to set up, but uh, it works great. Price is right. Uh, I'll do videos on these coming up and hopefully do individual ones. 
Uh, Satscape Win32 version uh, is a uh, Java-based satellite tracker. I've basically abandoned that in favor of Orbitron because of the uh, the automatic tuning Doppler correction in Orbitron. SDR Sharp, we know about. Spectrum Analyzer. This I just discovered the other day. Uh, it kind of looks like it might be from the same developers as uh, uh, MultiPSK, just by the logo, but I don't know. Uh, this is not live right now. This thing is a PC hog, and I'm already maxed out on this PC. But uh, this was the FM radio a few minutes ago. You can't see much because I'm zoomed so far out. I'm doing right up to 95 kilohertz. But uh, yeah, um, if you want to analyze a signal, I'm not sure whether I've got this working just right or not. But uh, you can see all the stuff we can hear way down at the bottom end. And then uh, this line here, I would have expected to be a little further over. And uh, I could be wrong on this, but this should be the data coming through that we see up here. Uh, I'm not 100% positive, and I'm not sure why it looks the way it does. And then I also, this one interests me. Why do we have another set of data way up there? So either I've got a problem with the setup of the program and calibration in my sound card, or there's something going on up at the top end here, and I think I might have a look into that and see uh, see what they're what they're sending out. Um, that takes to taxi decoder. This is a, a, an executable jar file as well. If you want to decode the location stuff from taxis in the city, uh, directory where I dump all my goodies. And I have one other directory that I store all my reference information in. So within my reference folder, I keep all kinds of documents, but I keep a master Excel sheet that I use for well, just reference for myself. These are my UV3R and UV5R frequencies, uh, some local frequencies. This is the amateur radio satellites. Uh, updated this on New Year's, so I just copied it from this page here. You can pause it and grab the link. Uh, this is where I check all the currently active sats as well as their respective uh, dedicated web pages. Uh, I found this a long time ago an FCC frequency band plan. This is a uh, it's dated 1994, but there's a lot of stuff that's still applicable. So when I find something new, I'll I edit it and throw in a new line and highlight it yellow. And eh, it's just a nifty dumping ground for stuff that I don't know off the top of my head. Everybody's familiar with this, the band plan. Some CB radio notes, marine VHF notes, uh, family radio service and GMRS notes. Uh, some random reference stuff, so uh, some calling frequencies and some voice and data mode frequencies, kind of handy. Q codes, pretty handy sometimes, but uh, not really used very often. This is my high frequency fax page, so when I'm using the up converter, I can, uh, I already have this sorted by Canada and the United States. So it's pretty handy. I can see who transmits on what. Uh, this is a little outdated. I think it's about a year or two old, but for the most part, it's still accurate. So I like tuning into HFX. I'll try and do a video. HFA cars. I haven't played with this yet. Pretty excited to try this out. This is a uh, high frequency uh, A cars transmissions from aircraft. So uh, and from well from ground stations too. So I'm gonna give that a try. And this is where we get into HF only items. These are all the HF um, uh, frequency list from Primetime Shortwave. Awesome site. You can download this file fresh. Uh, it's updated quite frequently. This one's December 19th. So this one is sorted by time. So if you're on, on uh, HF and you want to know, hey, who is that on this frequency? Well, you can just cross-reference the two. If you wanted to tune into a specific country, well, you go to this tab. If you uh, are tuned in by frequency and you want to know who's online, who's going to be broadcasting, use this tab. So, pretty handy. 
that's about the extent of the file. I hope somebody got some tips out of uh, out of this video. If you have any comments or thoughts, improvements, ideas, please post them down in the comments below. I love hearing from all you guys and really make it uh, interesting for me to share content because I get so many great ideas from uh, all you out there. Anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for sharing.